plastics mimic estrogen. So they're gonna wreak havoc on hormones. You're gonna see estrogen dominance, more of it in women, increased estrogen, lower testosterone in men, fellas. It's gonna affect fertility from low libido to getting pregnant, and it's gonna affect the brain. All right, so microplastics found in human blood. This was just published on March 24th of this year. And the name of the article was Discovery and Quantification of Plastic Particle Pollution in Human Blood and by Heather Leslie and her team. Now the study was the first of its kind to find microplastics in human blood. Now we previously detected it in feces and placental tissue of humans, and we found that plastics bioaccumulated in the liver, kidney, and gut of mice. But now microplastics in the blood have a serious implication to human health. So how's it getting into our bodies? Well, mostly through ingestion and inhalation from air, water, food, and personal care products. I've been saying this for a while. Now stay tuned later in this episode, I'm gonna give you the top sources of microplastics. Now these are an issue for adults and children alike. These microplastics contain BPA and phthalates. Microplastics in the blood are going to cause an inflammatory response to the immune system. Now this is gonna be a source of chronic inflammation because you have a sustained antigen in the system. And this is going to lead to diseases of the immune system like autoimmune disease. But we also know plastics mimic estrogen. So they're gonna wreak havoc on hormones. You're gonna see estrogen dominance, more of it in women. Increased estrogen, lower testosterone in men, fellas. It's gonna affect fertility from low libido to getting pregnant. And it's gonna affect the brain. The chemicals in microplastics are neurotoxicants. Even at low doses, you're going to see changes in the brain's microstructure. And that's going to lead to developmental and behavioral issues in children. And we're also gonna see increased risks of brain cancer breast cancer, and prostate cancer. They're also connected to increased blood pressure, type two diabetes, and the number one killer, heart disease. Now this study in itself was a small study. There was 10 volunteers. We obviously need to see larger studies, but boy, oh boy, if this is a reflection of the larger population, we have a big issue in our hands. If only 10 volunteers are showing microplastics in the blood, I'm very curious to see what 1,000 volunteers show. All right, so before we move further, what are microplastics? They're plastic fragments of a certain size. It's five millimeters and below. Now, it's a major threat to our oceans and humanity. Why? Because they're everywhere. They take 450 to 1,000 years to break down. Animals suffer, humans suffer, the environment suffers. As per the article, microplastic pollution in seawater and marine organisms across the tropical eastern Pacific and Galapagos. It's a long name of an article, but that's your article. It's a fantastic article by David Nunez and his team. And it is quoted that microplastic contamination now appears as one of the world's environmental main concerns. Right? They explain there, there are high amounts of microplastics found in coastal cities, ports, anywhere where there's shipping activities, coastal landfills, and coastal dumping sites. Once plastic debris go into the ocean, they break down into microplastics by photolytic, right, from the light, mechanical, and biological degradation. So over time, these plastics are releasing microplastics that are having a really, really pronounced effect on the environment. So according to the UN, there are as many as 51 trillion microplastic particles in the environment right now. So primarily, where are we seeing them coming from? So the main sources that we're gonna see microplastics are the laundering of synthetic clothes. Yes, yeah, synthetic clothes that we're washing. We're gonna get 35% of those primary microplastics into the ocean. Then through the abrasion of tires, through driving, that's 28%. And then intentionally added microplastics in personal care. For example, microbeads and facial scrubs, that's about 2%. Those are the primary sources. Now secondary sources, which make up 69 to 81% of microplastics in the oceans are from plastic bags, plastic bottles, fishing nets, right? Larger pieces. Now, we're seeing these microplastics not only hanging out on the top of the ocean, but they're all the way down in the sediment of the seafloor, right? We learn about in this article that 60% of all plastic items produced are less dense than seawater, right? So some are gonna be on the surface floating and some of them are gonna be at the bottom of the ocean. And I'll attach a beautiful picture by David Litschwager of National Geographic. It's a picture where you see a fish. It's a sample from, I believe, the Hawaiian coast, a sample of a picture of a fish. Uh, and we see plastic all over the fish's environment. 
it's actually a picture of plastic suspended in a matrix where there happens to be a fish more than where the fish is supposed to belong in the ocean. So in this picture, you'll see a living organism tangled in microplastics, and that is a microcosm of the whole ocean. But now onto human health, right? We found, and I mentioned that we see it in feces, placenta, animal organs, and now in human blood. How are microplastics getting into our system, right? So the top places that microplastics are found in no particular order, cosmetics, right? From makeups to sunscreen, microfiber clothing and materials, right? Pay attention to this one. Face masks, COVID face masks that we're using are medical face masks, right? We're also seeing it in things like toothpaste, lip gloss, dental polymers, fragments of polymeric implants, polymeric drug delivery nanoparticles, tattoo ink residues. That's how they're getting in our system, but also food, right? Things like salt, things like tea, the tea bags that are made out of plastic, major source of microplastics in the body, rice, beer, honey, is it a surprise? Tap water. And the least surprising of all, fish. In this article, it's quoted that in the present study, microplastic contamination and consumption by marine organisms were reported through quantification of microplastic particles in the digestive tract of 240 marine organisms of human consumption, including fish, cephalopod mollusks, and crustaceans. Microplastic fragments were detected in 166 out of the 240 specimens, 69%, from the 16 different species analyzed. Moreover, microplastic particles were found in 149, 71% of the 210 fish from 14 different species. The value is higher than those previously reported, which allows to conclude that microplastic debris in the form of fish feed may accumulate over time and space. We suspect that the value may have considerably increased during the last year as a direct consequence to the massive plastic litter produced and discarded in the environment through the COVID-19 pandemic. Incredible. We've seen a boom in the ingestion of microplastics going into fish of which we are eating because of the increase in masks that we're using. So you're gonna be exposed to microplastics. They are everywhere. We're breathing them in, we're eating them, they're touching our skin. They won't be coming in dermally, but if we do have a cut, that opens a space for it. But really it's ingestion and inhalation. Now, I want to bring this to your attention. The worst plastic polluters in the industry are Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Nestle, Dannon, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, and Colgate-Palmolive. So I wanna bring awareness to this. If you are supporting this company, or I want you to Google the companies or companies that are owned by the industry. You can find it, like smaller companies that are owned by Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Nestle, who are in their portfolios. You'll see that a lot of companies you had no idea are connected to these big plastic polluters. So first and foremost, think about who you're supporting. Also, reducing fish intake. Reducing or paying attention to where your cosmetics are coming from. Do they have microplastic? Do they have purposeful abrasives? Are any of the microfibers that you're using, do you use microfibers? Anything that is used with beads or abrasives need to leave, don't support those. Also, uh, bringing awareness to things that are in plastic in your home. Even if you're using facial scrubs, exfoliants, are they natural exfoliants versus plastic bead exfoliants and are they in a plastic bottle or a glass bottle? So starting to bring your habits into the awareness is gonna make a big change, staying away from plastic, reducing it, not supporting the plastic polluters, big thing. Now for you, overall, think about your modes of detoxification. These are called amunctories. Your liver, your kidney, your poop, major ones. The breath is not gonna get rid of plastics. The urine will get rid of BPA. That's where we see BPA, so increasing urine. And sweat most likely will not. Uh, so really we have to think about supporting the liver, the kidney, pooping, and flushing uh, the kidneys to pee. So think about liver, and this isn't medical advice, ask your doctor before taking any of these, but things like milk thistle, turmeric, dandelion, burdock root, schizandra, turkey tail mushrooms, these are really supportive herbs for the liver that you can be ingesting every single day as a tea, as a tincture, through food, all of the fruits and vegetables, colors of the rainbow, are all gonna support your liver 
to basically build up its resilience towards this array of microplastic, this wave that is coming into our body, which now we find in the blood, which is crazy. What about your kidney? Things like aloe, capsicum, right? That's cayenne, comfrey, dandelion, licorice, horsetail, noni juice, stinging nettles, parsley root, rhubarb, java tea leaf, juniper. These are great herbs that are gonna help support your kidney and help flush them along with drinking a lot of water. One thing that I use is I make, uh, I use hot water and I put a little lemon in it and then I'll put in a tincture to support my kidney every morning to flush it out. That is really, really important. So you're cleaning out that urinary tract, right? And you're moving those water soluble toxins like BPA out of the body. So once your liver and your kidney are optimized, now you're building your resiliency to all of this stuff. And you gotta make sure you're pooping. If you are not having bowel movements every single day, it's a problem, right? Because a lot of these microplastics are going to be coming out of your bowels, right? So you have to make sure you're supporting your gut with fiber, with good quality fermented prebiotic and probiotic foods. Make sure you're moving, make sure you're walking after eating, make sure you're reducing stress levels. And uh, yeah, if, you're, if you are not going to the bathroom, it's a major issue, not only just in releasing microplastics, but overall when it comes to your hormone balance. And hormones are gonna be the number one thing that are affected by these microplastics. So if you aren't going to the bathroom every single day, it would be put it on the top of your list to really work on your gut health so you're moving it. All right, so there you have it. We found microplastics in the human blood. Am I surprised? No. Am I saddened? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the negligence, that we have towards humanity, the separation that we feel towards our environment is egregious. And if we took a little bit of responsibility and foresight of seeing where we're going with this, not only for our health, our children's health, but really the world we live in, we would immediately, immediately stop. But it's up to us to make those changes. So by healing yourself, you start healing others and you start healing the world. So make the move for yourself start teaching others, tell people, send them this podcast if you heard about this or if you think that this can benefit people because microplastics are going to be a major, major issue in the next 10, 15 years. Mark my word for it, I'm saying it right now.